just because it's in the cloud doesn't mean that you or one of your employees or coworkers can't screw it up. Yeah, Microsoft, uh, you know, with Office 365 and Google with G Suite, if you screw up bad enough, they don't really care. And your SOL, but you can do your own backups. Let's take a look, let's discuss. All right, so first up, this video is sponsored by Synology. And this is my eight drive Synology. It has a four core Ryzen processor in it and I've maxed out the RAM and I've got dual 10 gig in here. I love this thing. It's got two NVMe slots. It's really fast. This is genuinely a great thing. They didn't pay me to say that. I'm saying that of my own free will. Uh, this video, Synology, so I, I was sort of playing around with this and um, I help people do stuff. And so sometimes I help people with G Suite, Google Suite, you know, like the paid for Google hosting thing. Sometimes I'm helping people with Office 365. Got a fair bit of mileage with both of those. And uh, when we're talking about backups and generally stuff in the cloud, uh, a lot of people erroneously assume that those cloud services are providing a safety net to cover every single thing. And historically that hasn't been true. Although Microsoft the last two or three years is really doing an incredible job and Google, not, not really, not, not so much. I'm gonna talk about some specific examples of that. Inconsistency in their messaging and that sort of stuff, fun stuff. But uh, it's still possible to run with scissors in the cloud. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just back up all of your cloud stuff? And I'm not just talking about your email, like your G Suite email or your Office 365 email, but I'm talking about your file storage, you know, Google Drive, uh, SharePoint, OneDrive, uh, even Box.com, Dropbox. You can mirror all of that and back it up to your Synology and do snapshots, stuff like that. What led to this video was I was working on some of that and I had some questions about how it worked. And I was really impressed with what Synology has done on the convenience side to make some of this a little bit more flexible. So let's talk about what you get out of the box without Synology with Microsoft 365. So I'm gonna introduce some words that maybe you're familiar with or maybe not, but when you subscribe to Office 365, there are out of the box defaults and there are things like the default data retention policy and what to do when somebody deletes something. How does that work? Microsoft with Office 365 since its inception, I mean, it's going on 10 years old at this point. That's it's pretty incredible really that, you know, time flies, you know, dark thoughts, all that but it's pretty incredible the stuff that Microsoft has had to deal with eating their own dog food. They've really put a lot more bumper rails on Office 365 than the way it was in say like 2012 or 2015. So if you search on the internet, it says, OMG, it doesn't cover user error and it doesn't cover this and it doesn't cover that for Office 365 you know, restore. What, what, what Microsoft is worried about is like a data center goes offline or there's a natural disaster or something like that. And they'll tell you, even in the modern documentation, the primary mechanism for exchange online, because they figure you're worried about email, is uh, geographically distributed replication. So the database that's running your email, your email is just an entry in a database server somewhere, that is mirrored in multiple different data centers. And so if Microsoft has a problem, Microsoft can recover. But what if you screw up and you delete things and you do other stuff? Well. Office 365 has pretty competent retention policies for defining how all of that stuff works. There are better facilities in Outlook, Microsoft's email client, for recovering individual messages. But it's still up to your administrators to set sane retention policies. If you, you know, set your retention policy to something very short and you delete something and don't notice, then um, it may be impossible to recover from that situation. I've seen situations where, you know, the out of the box default might be say 30 days and your IT people haven't messed with that. Somebody was planning to leave the company and they just went in and sort of deleted all the stuff that they didn't need except for, you know, whatever their current tasking and their assignment was. So they left the company. It took the company like a, a week or so to find a replacement. The replacement comes on and the, the orders to IT is basically just like, okay, Bob's gone. You need to give Sam access to everything Bob had and you load it up and everything's gone. And then you go into recover stuff and you can really only recover stuff that's like a week old or a week or two old because Bob deleted everything 
a couple of weeks before he even announced that he was going to leave. And no one noticed because it was only Bob's stuff. So 30 days later, you know, you're SOL, basically. The other thing is you have somebody that leaves and, you know, do you keep paying for a license? How does that work? Well, in Office 365, you've got that, you know, archival license that you can keep paying for. But wouldn't it be more convenient if you could just download everything here? And that's talking about Office 365, but really, you know, we've been focusing on Exchange, but there's also SharePoint, OneDrive, all of the other stuff. Even just basic things like if you delete their OneDrive account, do they lose access to files? Well, on the web, certainly they won't be able to log in anymore. But if they had set up OneDrive on their local home computer, they're still going to have access to any files that were synced to their home computer. Did you know that? Was that on your radar? You've got some homework to do in terms of reading and configuration and, and all of that kind of stuff. If you search for this online, just be aware that there are older posts that uh, say, oh my gosh, you need to buy an Office backup solution. OMG, it's required. If you have a, an employee that acts maliciously in every scenario, you're gonna need it. Historically, that was true. That's not really as true anymore. Now, before I get too far into high praise for Microsoft, if you look at their master services agreement, it does have three sections where it talks about backup. Now, two of those have to do with canceling your account. Well, we've covered that pretty well. But the last one is service availability. And Microsoft says, you're on your own for backups. They are not responsible for your data. It's really pretty much the only position they can take. I mean, they'll try, it's a best effort. It works pretty well in my experience, but yeah, you need your own system for backups. What you're getting with the Synology software stack is not really functionality, at least with the Microsoft side, it is convenience because they've got a really slick UI for the backups and they've got a really slick UI for situations like you have an employee leave and you're gonna need their stuff six months later. You didn't have to subscribe to a cloud service in order to maintain their data. You can just keep it all here and make it easy for IT administrators or individuals to browse through. So you're paying for convenience. While Microsoft has pretty good and up-to-date documentation, you know, I was looking at an article that was updated just a couple of days ago um, for this particular video on the exchange side of things and, and what to do when you remove a, uh, an employee from your Office 365 account and you know how you sort of manage that, starting with changing their password and ending with you know doing the archive thing. Uh, Google, on the other hand, the documentation is not great and the documentation that's there, a little out of date. So on the Google side, there's this idea of something called the vault. And so anything that's important or critical or whatever, you also set a retention policy there. That's the stuff that you're gonna have to search and, and do your homework on. Uh, but anything that's critically important, like accounts or whatever, go into the vault. But the out-of-the-box defaults don't make a lot of sense. A lot of the documentation says, oh, you've got a 30-day retention for this. But if you look at the fine print for the actual user accounts, the retention policy is only 20 days. And it is possible to configure a retention policy of zero days, which has an immediate effect. So if you have an employee that goes rogue and they delete a bunch of stuff and then they go in and set their retention policy to zero days, you're SOL. You're not getting your stuff back. It is not... It is not recoverable in that situation, the Google help and documentation and no amount of support tickets. You know, it's just, you can't even get a hold of Google support anyway, really. Uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not a good situation if you're, if you're in that situation. But if you thought you had 30 days, you didn't. You only had 20. Just FYI, important to know. On the Google side, when we're talking about email versus Google Drive, versus like the calendar, versus some of the other stuff from Google. You know, in their documentation, they're talking about Google Voice and Hangouts. And those, those aren't really, I mean, are those still Google products? What, when is the last time this documentation was updated? If I were an IT administrator looking at this, I would have a very low confidence that Google would be able to do anything to help me in one of those edge cases. I would sleep a lot better at night knowing not only that the backup is here on an offsite backup appliance, but that the, uh, you know, sort of single interface that is managing this sort of gives me a one-stop shop for restoring those kinds of things. So there's active backup for business for the G Suite, and there's active backup for business for Office 365. But then there's also cloud backup. And cloud backup is great for the synchronization side of things where you're syncing your drives to your Synology and then backing it up. So you can sort of pick how you want to do this. You can have your Google Drive or your, your Dropbox or Box.com or OneDrive 
synchronize to your Synology, just like it's another device, just like it's a laptop, desktop, computer, whatever you want to do. And then as a result of it being synchronized that way, you can have your snapshots and your file replication and everything that you need, plus also local network access. You don't, you know, it's already sort of pre-synced. You got a terabyte of stuff, you don't have to try to sync a terabyte of stuff on your laptop. You can just hit it on the LAN, it's pretty fast, it's nice, all that stuff. All right, so check this out. This is the Synology documentation for doing this. And this is some of the best documentation in the business. They've got a step-by-step -step guide here with pictures that shows you what you're actually gonna back up. So here's the list of stuff. And this is the actual real list of stuff, not the sort of, I mean, look, this is shameful that Google's documentation is not as good as this. The reality here is that you're basically giving the Synology full access to your G Suite account. I mean, how else is it gonna be able to connect and back stuff up? But this guide will walk you through all of the stuff that you need to do to set the encryption keys and the certificates and things like that, it's even more secure than a password because of the way that it requires the encryption and the connectivity and all of the other stuff. And sort of each service, especially like Drive and some of the other ones, you go through and you create these API keys. You can even you know restrict the API keys by IP address and some other parameters. That's a little bit more advanced. But the documentation here walks you through step by step so that you don't really miss anything. And without this documentation, I mean, would you have been able to do this? Now, similar to the G Suite backup, you know, active backup for business for G Suite, the same thing exists for Microsoft Office 365. And again, Synology has great documentation to walk you through the process. Much like the other setup, it depends on having very specific and very wide permissions. So you want to protect these assets, you know, these artifacts that you download uh, and sort of feed to your Synology. They've got a web thing that you sign into, so you end up with a Synology account um, to enable and authorize these accounts and some of the other stuff. And so if you follow Synology's guide in the documentation, you'll end up with a pretty solid setup with Office 365 being able to connect and it'll even automatically discover new users in your Office 365 tenant and back them up automatically. But you know, be sure to check on that, double check on it, check on the restore portal every now and then just to keep an eye on it and make sure that it's working. But then if you've got another Synology somewhere else and you wanna do replication or you wanna do the Synology cloud, you can do that and it's just point and click to do that. It's a really easy, simple thing to do. Now to be sure, just, just like Microsoft, Google does give you some tunables for configuring the vault and setting retention policies and doing all that. It's just, you've gotta be careful that you sort of lock out the permission to change the retention policies from anybody that you, you know that you don't trust or anybody that is not an absolutely key employee because the effect is immediate. When you change the retention policy, and I can't believe they still haven't fixed this, but the, the retention policy change is immediate. And most of the documentation says it's 30 days, but there are some things it's actually 20 days because Google treats all these different products from different teams as different things. And it's like, I'm gonna delete this person's account. Well, that's gonna take a lot of stuff with it, but that ability to recover there is 20 days, not 30, 20, unless, you're using Synology Active Backup for G Suite, and then you can just back it all up here. On the Microsoft side of the world, if you you know add or change or delete employees, this thing is actually plugged in enough and smart enough to know that, hey, you've added a new employee. Let me just go ahead and back up and retain their stuff. Maybe for legal reasons, you have to retain stuff for seven years. There are certain industries that are required by law to retain stuff for seven years. You can configure that on Office 365, but Microsoft sort of suffers a little bit the same way that Google does here in that the retention policy configuration uh, is sort of scattered a little bit when we're talking about retention for user oops is screwed up versus retention for uh, you know legal requirements and things like that. There's a whole other separate area of Office 365 if like HIPAA and uh, you know litigation discovery and stuff like that is of concern to you. So there's some knobs and tunables there that you get in the cloud. But again, what you pay for with Synology, it's convenience. Yes, you can turn it on. Yes, you can protect against some of those user error type things. But architecturally, when we're talking about Office 365 and G Suite, they're really covering their own butts from their own mistakes or their own unfortunate circumstances. They're not always in every scenario covering the unfortunate scenarios that you have. At the same time, if you look at other articles on this, they're all doom and gloom, and I say that in every scenario you have to buy a, a backup solution. And I'm telling you that's actually not the case anymore because you can configure retention, you can configure a lot of stuff to protect you from that. It's a headache, 
still, it's doable. I would probably not trust G Suite uh, for that, even with the retention policy configured, I would sleep better at night knowing that I have a local copy of the stuff in G Suite. Whereas with Office 365, I'm a little bit more trusting because Microsoft has sort of been on the receiving end of angry customers and they've done a lot of stuff to try to make it a little better. But even with all of that, it's still a headache and it's still kind of a lot of hoops that you have to jump through for support and restore. It's not really a self-service portal. On the Synology, end users and IT both have a pretty reasonable and competent self-service portal for uh, restoring individual items. And restoring items is really maybe not the right way to think about that. It's really, you can cherry pick the item that you want, pull it off the Synology, and then re-import it into your SharePoint environment or re-import it into your OneDrive or whatever. The controls for SharePoint in particular in Microsoft, you know, all of the Synology stuff, we're not talking about that. Is, has become quite good. So you can roll back an entire SharePoint site. You can set versioning and retention and controls, which is really great for malware because you can have SharePoint mapped as like a drive letter. And then so like you get the crypto malware or whatever and it starts hitting the drive letter and doing stuff. Microsoft has added stuff to deal with that in the cloud. You just have to turn it on and you can recover from that kind of a situation without a Synology backup. That said, again, having that backup and being able to just hit a button and restore it I think you sleep better at night. That's kind of, that's worth something. So they've done a pretty good job with the software and the polish on this, in my opinion. Another dark timeline use for this is, you know, uh, during the pandemic, uh, life's been rough for a lot of small businesses. A lot of small businesses are gonna close forever and you may need to maintain those business records forever. You don't need it as fancy as a unit as this, but on some of the really inexpensive Synology NAS units, like this one, that's pretty much the lowest cost unit that you can get that has the active backup for business with G Suite and Office 365 integration, you can close up shop and archive literally everything in the cloud and then you don't have monthly service fees anymore. So that's another, you know, it's kind of a dark timeline, but this is a use case where I've actually used these because it's like, ah, you know, we're closing up shop. I'm gonna sell my customer list to another uh, business somewhere else. Uh, or some other you know competitor that does business in my area or whatever, I'm gonna sell my list of customers and the stuff that they deal with, but I've gotta maintain my business records and my online accounts and stuff for a while, but you know, basically I'm shutting down. You can just archive it all on this, and then if you need something later for you know, proof of records or business income or you know, something comes up on your taxes or something comes up where somebody needs a file or something, you have all that archived and you're not paying the archive service. You can just shut all of the cloud stuff down entirely and there's no ongoing service fees or whatever. You can just unplug this and stick it in a closet uh, until you actually need the data, you know, and sort of move on with things, which is nice because a lot of cloud services are designed to keep you paying from now until the end of time. If you're feeling adventurous, you know, it's sort of darkest before the dawn and you're thinking, you know, it's like, I haven't sold it in such a way that maybe I can reopen the business and do some stuff. Well, you can always self-host. I mean, with the uh, own cloud and self-hosted email and stuff like that, you can get away with that on these to a certain extent. You need to do a little bit of security hardening, jump through some hoops and you know, uh, make it to where it's not just wide open to the internet. But you can actually run a lot of services off this for a small business and do it reasonably well, especially these higher end units. I mean, four cores with a lot of RAM. I can run Docker, I can run a Steam cache. We've done videos about that in the past. It really is a good product. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This is some thoughts on backing up the cloud software as a service using Synology and their software. I'm signing out and I'll see you later.